Welcome to my mini inventory system 2.0. So to start off, this is my abstract class database. It will serve as the list that will contain these following fields, which will be used by our child class product inventory. Here, I've created the interface that will serve as the skeleton of my product inventory child class. So this will contain all these methods. New methods in my final project are the filter list, and filter list, sort products is ascending and sort products descending. So let's hop on to the product inventory child class to see how I've implemented those following methods. So product inventory child class here inherits from the abstract class and the interface. And I've initiated here uh, the following private fields. Um, you will see later why I've used templates, uh, templates here. So sample products will basically serve as the initial items in our list uh, to be passed on to the database. Uh, this is the display product details implementation that will be used in our display all products. Our product uh, uh, method, add product, that will ask input from the user and adds it to, to our list, basically. So remove product, um, basically uh, searches the item in the list using this, using this um, link method and lambda expression to browse through the list using the following keys matching matching the id so on and so forth modify product is basically the combination of remove and add product but uh, this time i've made it quite different from my from my midterm project that is you know before um when i when i search for an object and and uh, what i basically did before is to when i find this sub um uh, find that uh, item in the list it will basically remove that one and insert the the modified product below the list so i kind of don't want that to happen but instead i want it to replace um the list itself or the item in the list without going below the list so <coughs> so what i did was to find its index using a link method and basically over overrides the list and that will retain its position in the list Moving forward on our fi uh, on my filter list and unfilter list, here I've used the temp list to to minimize the side effects of my of my program. Because before, when I used products list al alone, and when I'm going to filter it using this this link method, it will basically replace all. This is my product product uh, list. Then it will basically replace all the product list with the with the with the new um, filtered list and I cannot retrieve all the list anymore so what I did is I passed in first before filtering I passed it first to to templates so templates then this one can be modified so this one will only show to the user and after I unfilter the list it will return back to its products list and and basically um, display all the products that was retrieved from the templates. And in unfiltered list, I've created a condition as well because um, before, when I accidentally toggled unfiltered list, it will erase all my list because the template was empty. So instead, I made a condition to not, I made a condition to to only use it when when template is already not zero or it basically contains all the items from the products list or originals products list next thing is to sort products ascending basically here i used again the link link method implementation that search from the item or that basically orders the item of its type id name price uh, manufacturing date and expiry date it is crucial here that i've implemented convert to date time and that is because um, string type uh, sorting string type only goes through alphanumeric cases, but to to date time types, it is more logical because it sorts it to oldest to newest and and newest to oldest. So that's basically uh, on that method and the reverse here on sort products descending, still a built-in method from the link link uh, system dot link. So moving forward to our 
wrapper class to hide the complexity of our child class I made a wrapper class that will will implement all all the method in our in our product or in our child class and this will basically um, I've added some exception handling here on on the add product and modified product because this one will will usually cause some exceptions because it asks user inputs um, remove product is okay filter list is also okay and filter list is basically a toggle sort products ascending and sort products descending are both scroller toggle as well so uh, going forward to our application manager this will I've instantiated here the wrapper class to run our 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 program or to run the implementations of our code and here are the, here is the code for my program that CS that will start the app so let's hop on and see my implementation in the console application here so start um, add product let's try and perhaps you cannot see that this one because of my my um, going to open it again because of my of my webcam or my camera there so I just make it like this one start add product and let's use um, 1010 cheese type in some price here 755 um, let's manufacture it by today um, two, two, will expire seven days later um, so successfully added a product prompt and it will appear below the list so removing the product let's try to remove um, pork chops here so I'll, I'll enter pork chop by the way I'll try pork it says not found so it must be complete so let's enter pork chops and it successfully uh, removed the, the product Modifying product, let's modify our raw milk here. So let's input its ID and let's still use 1000. And instead, I'll make it milk, same price, 159. And it's manufactured yesterday. It will expire seven days later. Successfully modify the product. So it's now milk. So filtering the list is kind of a wildcard search. So when I, this is kind of case sensitive because uh, when I type here WH doesn't show anything when I type the key capital oh I forgot capital W and H it will filter the whole chicken let's unfilter it and filter it again and use the dates of that were manufactured yesterday so that's 1013 it will only appear the, the items that were manufactured yesterday filter the list so sorting the products, um, let's sort it by name. So it will we will sort it B, C, and so on. Descending uh, ID number, so it will sort this list by the the highest to lowest ID number. Um, let's descending again manufacturing date that's from from newest to to oldest. Sort products ascending expiry date that's from from the oldest to the newest so that's pretty much for the demonstration but i forget let's let's push some exceptions here let's use it on add product and i'll input some something below 100 it will show an error let's do something um legal here like 1010 or 1011 then let's enter product name something and i accidentally push some exceptions so it will cause an error and return to the main menu and doesn't add anything to the list and um, let's try that again uh, an exception to the date so 10 11 so let's call it some cheesecake price of 100 peso and let's have this 13 over uh, 10 22 2. so there's no month 13 so we expect this to cause error and that causes the error so it was cache catch in our error exception handling. So I think that would be all for for my product demonstration or mini inventory system demonstration. I thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.